Okay, so like I said, we're gonna be using this book. Um, we're gonna actually get to take a test today, which is gonna be good. We're gonna go passage by passage, and then we'll do like, start with the first passage, take it, answer all the questions. Um, I'll go through the answers, ask me anything you need. I'll go through some that I thought were a little bit harder when I was going through it, and then we'll go on to the next one and go from there. So, just some reminders when you're doing this. Um, we talked about the strategies when you're reading them to like, you can skim it for three minutes and then do the questions for five, or you read everything and you do it four and four. Either way, whatever you decide to do is fine. Um, a really important thing is to make yourself interested in the passages. I know they're not always super interesting, but just make it the most exciting thing that you've ever heard of. Another reminder, just make sure you answer what the question is actually asking. Um, there might be some questions that are a little bit confusing, but the answer will be related to the passage. You'll be able to find it. Another thing that's going to be helpful is if you index the passage, which is where if you read something that you're like, oh, I should probably remember that, you can either take a note on the side of it or just underline it, whatever you feel like is going to be the most helpful to you. Okay. So we're going to be using test 10. So open to page 800. And then since this is probably the first test, or it might be the first test that um, some of you guys have taken and we just really want to get into the flow of things, we're going to take 10 minutes. So I'll write like the start time on the board and the end time, and then you can like use the clock. Actually, it might be a couple minutes off, but okay. So we start. Uh, go ahead and start. We start at 404. Looks like about 401 up there.
about a minute left. Okay, so now it's time. Do we need a little bit more time, or do we get through those questions? So everybody's done? Okay. How did that go for everybody? Was that, like, did you say that was harder than you would expect? Easier? Normal? Just about, like, yeah, what you would expect. Okay. So I'll go through some answers. 1 is C, 2 is J, 3 is B, 4 is H, 5 is D, 6 is G, 7 is D, 8 is J, 9 is A, 10 is H. Do I need to repeat any of those? Okay, so what questions do you guys have? Like any certain numbers? Yeah. Number three. Number three. Okay. So Mrs. Fairfax's opinion about Miss Iyer and Mr. Rochester's relationship can best be exemplified by which of the following quotations from the passage? So... The answer was B. How it will answer, I cannot tell. I really don't know. So throughout this whole passage, Miss Fairfax was like, isn't he too old for you? Isn't he like a proud man? Like, she was really unsure about everything going on. So it also started with like, I feel so astonished. So she just really could not believe that this marriage was going to happen. So how it will answer, I cannot tell. I really don't know. Is kind of showing how much she really doesn't think that's a good idea or why she doesn't know or didn't expect it to happen. So that's why B is the answer. Any other ones? Uh, seven. Seven? Okay. We may reasonably infer from details in the passage that Miss Iyer and Mrs. Fairfax are alike because they both and that ended up being D. So what did you put for that one? No, I remember that. I didn't get to that one. Didn't get to it? Okay. Well, I couldn't think of it. Okay. That's fine. So this one, a good one is like um, process of elimination kind of. So the first one that would be uh, best to cancel out would be C. They're the same age and social class. They might be the same social class, but they're not the same age like whatsoever because on line like 12 it said that mrs fairfax had a dear husband who died like 15 years ago so she's definitely not the same age so that's why you can cross out c and then um a believe that mr rochester should not marry his governess it wants to know why you think that miss Iyer and mrs fairfax are alike and Mrs. Fairfax might believe that Mr. Rochester shouldn't marry um, Miss Iyer, but Mrs. Iyer obviously doesn't think that if she's going to marry him. So that's why that one's not it. And then for B, believe that Mr. Rochester will break Miss Iyer's heart. Well, if she's going to marry him, she obviously doesn't think that he's going to break her heart. So then it can't be that one. But they do both say that Mr. Rochester has been very fond of her. So that's why it's D. Four. 
The phrase, you are so discreet and so thoroughly modest and sensible in lines 63 to 64 is used by Mrs. Fairfax to, and then we got H for that one. Okay. So, so in lines 63 and 64, a little bit before that quote actually starts, um, she says, I knew such an idea would shock perhaps even offend you. So it's used by her to say that, well, she hadn't said that yet because she didn't want to offend her. So it's kind of like why she wouldn't have said anything about why she's a little bit conflicted about their feelings for each other. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Yeah. Two. Two. It can reasonably... It can be reasonably inferred from the conversation that Mrs. Fairfax believed Miss Iyer will, and then J, potentially regret her decision to agree or marry, to marry Mr. Rochester. So this is kind of going back with the answer to the first one we talked about, how uh, Mrs. Fairfax was just really questioning everything about their relationship, like kind of the whole time. So what answer did you put for this one? H, no longer desire to marry him. That's what she kind of hopes will happen, but Miss Iyer really never says anything along the lines of, well, I'm not really sure about this, or maybe it's not a good idea. She's all in the whole time. So she really doesn't think that she won't ever marry him. But in, oh, where is it? Line 49. Um, she said she wished to put her on her guard. It is an old saying that all is not gold that glitters. That's kind of saying like, well, this might seem like a good idea right now, but it could not be in the future. So that's how you got to get to she might regret it in the future. Any other ones? Yeah. No? Okay. Okay. So one thing I kind of forgot to mention before that one is to, when you start a passage, make sure you read that little bit in the beginning to kind of preheat your brain is how we said it last time. So go ahead and start passage two. We'll start at 420 and end at 430.
One minute left. So that's all the time we have for that one. Um, do we need a little bit more time? Or are you most everybody good? Okay. So I'll go through some answers. 11 is A. 12 is J. 13 D. 14 G. 15 A. 16 G. 17 C. 18 H. 19B and 20s H. So, questions on this one? Yeah. 11. 11. Information in passage A establishes that the spirit of 76 was. Okay, so it says go to lines 41 and 46. So that says the spirit of Nebraska was what promoted northerners like Douglas to create the Kansas Nebraska Act. That went against the spirit of 76. And then through the rest of the lines, it says, which was the hope of the founding fathers that slavery would be strangled within the original southern states over time. So for slavery to be strangled, that means that it was going to go away eventually. And that, well, it was the hope of the founding fathers that eventually slavery would go away. So A, the founding fathers wanting to eliminate slavery was what matches up with what it says in 46, or line 46. Because in like B, the founding fathers were not trying to encourage it. Um, and then in D, that one, did you put D? No, I put B. Okay. Well, it's not gonna be that one because they weren't trying to encourage slavery. It was just allowed still in the South. Um, and it was never going to die out on its own because of how, um, how much the southern states were actually promoting it. So that's why it doesn't match up with B. Other questions? Online kids, any questions? Okay, I'm just gonna choose one. Um, how about 16? So passage B indicates that the late 1850s Democrats, and then the answer is G. So this one, it was a little bit more difficult because they didn't give you the actual lines that they wanted you to go to. But it does give you passage B, so that's a good place to start. In about the middle of this first paragraph, it talks about how the Democrats drafted legislation in 1850 and 1854 that contained language which seemed to predict that Congress would not be able to exclude slavery. So, in a way... It does use legislation to support their agenda because they realize that Congress wouldn't be able to abolish slavery because of those constitutional constraints of like people's rights and stuff, even though obviously slavery is not people's rights. Okay. Any other questions on this one? Yeah. 13. 13. Okay. 
It can reasonably be inferred from passage A that before the Dred Scott decision, and then D. So I found this one in line 27 through like 30, where it said the Missouri Compromise and the Compromise of 1850 were at odds with the new Dred Scott decision, which denied Congress the right to expose slavery. So this makes it unclear because the Missouri Compromise and the Compromise of 1850 were kind of like fighting with the Dred Scott decision. So we don't know if before it, like, they could exclude it, and then afterwards they couldn't, or if they couldn't at both times, or if they could at both times. So it was all just kind of unclear with all the decisions and compromises and acts and all that stuff. So. Anything else? Yeah. 17. 17, okay. Which of the following statements best describes how Lincoln felt the rest of the country was responding to the expansion of slavery? So I found this one in lines 84 through like 86, where it said, he saw the American public become increasingly indifferent to slavery and believed the people were naive to the democratic conspiracy. So in the second half of answer C, it says the North was becoming too indifferent or frightened to challenge the South, which is really almost exactly what it says in 85 when it said they're becoming increasingly indifferent. And then um, for the first part of the answer, Lincoln believed that the South desired the expansion of slavery. Throughout the, thi or throughout the passage B, they were talking about, um, I think it was passage. How the South, yeah, which stated that all new states and territories should be allowed to vote on whether slavery should be allowed. That's what the Democrats were going for, so that would be the South in this instance. So C is what matches up best with how Lincoln felt. Any other questions on this one? Pretty much good? Okay. So on to passage three. Do we think we can do this one in nine minutes or should we stay with 10? Stay with 10, okay. Sounds good to me. So go ahead and start.
30 seconds. <clears throat> It's time. It was really quiet for some reason. Okay. 21 is C. 22, J. 23, C. 24, F. 25, D. 26, G. 27, B. 28, J. 29, A. And 30, F. All of them? Yeah. Yeah. 21, C. 22, J. 23, C. 24, F. 25, D. 26, G. 27, B. 28, J. 29, A. And 30, F. Details in the passage suggest that. Okay, so this one is probably, you could do process of elimination with it, but in line 70, it said the last character that I played was Sir Harry Revel. So if you just look at option F, the narrator does not always cast to play female characters. That one has it kind of like explicitly stated that she played a sir, which is like a guy. And then if we do go through the other ones, the narrator preferred masquerade scenes. There's nothing in the passage that really like said like, oh, those were her definitely her favorite. Or the narrator believes that no actress can be successful in theater. She has stage fright. Well, this girl was obviously terrified every single time she stepped on stage and she did all right. So not that one. And then the narrator's stage fright disappeared because she never had to face hostile audiences. Well, in her second play, the audience was not happy about it being a different one. And then she was terrified because she thought that she was the one that made the mistake. But I guess her stage fright never disappeared because she was still scared at that point. So then F would be the only one that's actually like supported in it. So yeah. Other questions on that? 26. 26. Okay, yeah, this one was confusing. It took me, like, it was hard. So, they, it ended up being G with it going 3, 2, 1, then 4. So, option 3, playing the character of Amanda in a trip to Scarborough. That happened first out of all of the four things that are listed there. And that's, and option G is the only one that has three stated first. So it would have to be this one just by process of elimination. It was a little tricky with, I think it was when she played like in the miniature picture and the epilogue song. Those two were both at the end of her career, but a little bit mixed up in the answer choices. So that's where that one would get a little bit confusing. But yeah, since three happened before everything else, it would have to be at the start and G's the only one that it has at the front. Other questions? No, I have to choose one. Let's do 30. The primary focus of lines 34 through 40 is, and then we get F. So in lines 34 through third, oh my bad, 34 through 40, it's talking about all of her experiences right after that play just got over, where there's applause, 
people talking about her and talking to her and all this stuff. So, option G, the opinion of an important gentleman regarding the narrator's performance. Well, that happened in there, but it wasn't what they were really trying to get across in that little paragraph. And then option H, the narrator's elation because she had become famous. Well, it said she was complimented on all sides and she experienced like such a great feeling after being rewarded by all this applause and stuff. But that's still not exactly what she was going for, for being famous. And then J, the narrator's own reflections on the quality of her first performance. She wasn't really thinking back like, oh my gosh, in act one, I messed this up. And then act three, I was like amazing. So she wasn't really reflecting on it, but it was talking about how she was feeling after um, like her emotions and her feelings after she had just had probably one of the best nights of her life. So and that's why you get F, because it just wants that like whole picture from that little paragraph. And then we don't have time for another one, so you guys can start your break right now.